Hello everyone. In our today's topic, we will going to talk about Russia's so-called referendum in Ukrainian states. These Ukrainian states are under Russian occupation. We know that the Russia began their special military operation against Ukraine on 24th February. Since then, almost seven months have gone, and we have all witnessed so many events in these days. This war is getting uglier every passing days, because it is a direct conflict between West and the East. Although it doesn't look like a Western war, but the war is similar to the 1980s Afghan war. In that war, the West, especially the United States, fight against USSR by using their most faithful pet, Pakistan. In this war, the European Union has taken the place of the Pakistan, and the loss of this war is being carried by the European Union nations. The world is suffering because of this war. The world is facing food crisis, supply chain debacle, and the fuel crisis because of this war. But the West, especially the United States, dragging this war because the war is a business for them. It is an open fact to all of us that the United States is supplying weapons to the Ukraine. Till today, they have sent 12.1 billion dollar weapon assistance to the Ukraine directly. Now the question is, what are the excuses the United States is giving to the world? To send the weapon to the Ukraine, the same excuses they give in case of 1980s Afghan war, the democracy, liberty, and sovereignty. The democracy, liberty, and the sovereignty has become the leftist tool in the today's time. These three words used to belong to the capitalistic world, but after disintegration of USSR in 1991, the left ideology went into the Western free world through the educational institute and colleges. Anyway. Let's get back to our main discussion point, which is related to the referendum of the Ukrainian states. The Russia conducted referendum in the four occupied regions of Ukraine between 23rd to 27th September, and these regions are Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporozhye. Before conducting referendum in those regions, Moscow obviously appointed pro-Russian officials before the voting. The European Union already declared that referendum as a sham. That is why the result of the voting did not amaze the Western world. They and the rest of the world knew the outcome of the voting, but we need to know the percentage of voting that goes in the favor of Russia. In Donetsk People's Republic, 99.23 percent votes goes in the favor of Russia. In Luhansk, 98.42 percent vote in the favor of the Russia. In Kherson and the Zaporozhye, 87.05 percent. And 93.11 percent people vote in the favor of Russia, respectively. Now Europe is trying to downplay this referendum according to their own voting pattern that was conducted after Euromaidan 2014 revolution, because after Euromaidan revolution, Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine, and that was a big blow to the European Union and European Union countries. Anyhow, according to the European survey, only 35 percent people of Donetsk Republic. Was ready to be the part of the Russian Republic, and 35 percent was against being the part of the Russian Republic, and race declined to give the answer. Although Donetsk Republic is always been dominated by Russian-speaking population, in Luhansk Republic the result was almost same. But in case of Kherson and Zaporozhye, the voting was not conducted at that time. Now we will going to talk about the five days voting, because according to the Western media houses. The voting has been marred by the several controversies, the controversies like forceful voting, torturing, and the use of the force. Again, I would like to give you a reminder that these are all according to the Western media, because there are no neutral media houses in this world. All the media houses are biased to their own ideology, and in case of Western media houses, most of them are left aligned. Anyhow. Who is left and the who is right? That is not important for our today's discussion. During the five days of voting, only special people were allowed to vote in the first four days of voting, and only on the last day, 27 September, the polling stations were open for the residents. The Russian authorities explained the awkward way of voting procedure to the world. They took that decision by concern for the safety of residents, because many of whom had to vote in the front line settlements. According to the Western media houses, the voters were coerced into the voting, with the armed soldiers going door to door to collect the votes, 
every ballots were filled out by the soldiers rather than the voters themselves even some individuals were not allowed to vote as there was only one vote allowed per household the voter identification cards were not mandatory rather necessary to their voting according to the washington law review the russia will try to use illegal referendums to give official justification for the annexation of additional ukrainian territory and for possible negotiation with the ukraine about its nato status which is currently unclear due to the conflicting statement in the past ukrainian laws anyhow the voting happened peacefully according to the russian government but all the countries of the world oppose this sham referendum and yes they should oppose because this should not be the way to annex the land of the other country the united nations secretary general antonio guterres called the referendum a violation of un charter and the international law the organization for security and cooperation in europe calling it illegal under both international and the ukrainian law the european union and the nato described it as an illegal and the sham referendum in the same way all the important world powers rejected the russian referendum in the russian occupied ukrainian regions and among those world powers india is one of them the indian ministry of external affairs spokesperson orindam bakchi expressed the support for sovereignty and the territorial integrity of ukraine now we need to highlight the possible consequences of these events because the war of words have broken out between the leaders of the two poles on the 22nd september the deputy chairman of the russian council dmitry medvedev said that any weapons in the moscow's arsenal including the strategic nuclear weapons could be used to protect the territories annexed to the russia from ukraine he also addressed that there is a no turning back from the referendum not only dmitry medvedev the russian senator konstantin koschev warned that after the referendum the protecting the people in this region will not be our right but our duty an attack on the people and the territories will be the attack on russia the president biden and the president putin also exchanged some heated words among themselves when biden warned putin of using chemical and the nuclear weapons then putin warned the europe to use the nuclear weapon at any cost if anyone challenged the russian sovereignty so the words are getting uglier day by day the behaviors of the leaders are getting uglier day by day now the world is getting uglier with every passing day with the nuclear threats from the both sides but the burning question over here is what europe or the united states can do to stop the russian advancement in the europe they cannot do anything meaningful other than lecturing the world if they were too sympathetic about the ukrainian population they should not push ukraine into the war they are now giving the every platform to the ukrainian president volodymyr zelensky to lecture the world The U.S. have failed to do anything constructive to stop the war, because they never wanted to stop the war. They are pushing the Europe and the world to the grave danger. The Russian President Vladimir Zelensky have already signed a decree to annex the Ukrainian territories. Now today they are organizing an event in Moscow, through which they will officially induct all the territories within the Russia. Although this event has been designed to present a sheen of legitimacy. to its illegal takeover of ukrainian territories now the west can increase the arms supply to kiev the russia still haven't been able to control the donstek region fully they are now trying to capture it fully using brute force the president zelensky says the annexation of russia will destroy any chance of peace talks the kiev also says nothing will change and its focus will continue to push to liberate the territories that are under the russian occupation After annexation of this land by the Russia, the Ukraine have already lost 15% of their land area. Not only 15% of the land, they have already lost vast natural resources of the eastern Ukraine. The Ukraine is home to the vast lithium reserve for the Europe and its environmental sustainability. It is also home to the other rare earth material, along with huge coal reserve, the iron ore, manganese, salt, oil, natural gas. titanium nickel timber and mercury not only natural resources the ukraine would lose their grain fields to the russia so in my view both of these countries have to understand their significance to the world the ukraine should not look at the united states as a reliable friend because us is no one's friend they use every nations for their own good when the importance of the ukraine will be over 
then they will not take the time to spit the Ukraine out. Both of these countries have to understand. Both of these countries, in this case, I mean the United States and the Russia, have to find some middle path to negotiate their problems in their own way. But I know my words are not different from my foreign minister says Joy Shankar's view. But there is a no other way these problems can be resolved. Now we have reached our questions. The first question is, which of the following country has declared the no longer full democracy? The first option is Hungary. Second option is Latvia. Third option is Finland. The fourth option is Germany. The second question is, the second smallest continent of the world is, the first option is Antarctica. Second option is Europe. Third option is Oceania. And the fourth option is South America. So this is the end of the topic. I hope you will going to find my topic informative. If you have any kind of inquiry or any kind of question regarding this topic or any other topic, then please mail me to my email address which is tuhin.power.academy at the rate gmail.com. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support.